let's talk about character leaders. But before that, for those of you that were not here, for anybody who wasn't here this week, maybe missed more than one day. All right. So in your packet, there's a pre-write plot page. It's page 14. You need to make sure that page is done first because that's where you get your ideas to be able to write your memoir. Okay. We have page 15, sensory details. We did page 15. You may have, and some of you have that if you weren't here. The sensory details page, okay? The sensory details page. And then we started working on pages 18 through 23. We're really only on page 18 and 19. I think we're going to stop there, but you have the packet to refer to if you need it, okay? So we're going to look at character leads today. Character leads. So I am going to pull this back up. When you look at the page 18 for character leads, no, page 18, we did setting the scene. These four types of leads are ways that you can start your memoir, okay? When we did setting the scene, we were talking about the scenery, the background of your story. So that scenery would be the first couple of sentences of your memoir. Then we did figurative language, where you were able to write a memoir statement that was a metaphor, a simile, an example of personification, or hyperbole. Everybody has that completed already, right? All right, so we've done that part. Now we're going to the character leads. The character leads are in three parts. So if you flip over, your page may not be numbered, but it would be page 19 if it's numbered. Character leads. Thank you. So you can follow along up here, the character leads. Character leads. Stories begin with the character speaking, thinking, or doing something. All right? Speaking, thinking, or doing something. So think about the characters in your story. Think about the characters in your story. You as a character or whomever else you're choosing. What can that character say? think about or do, right? So let's look at these examples and then I'll pull my example up. It says, there's no way I'm gonna jump off this cliff into the icy water below, I whispered to myself. So the character is speaking. Speaking out loud, but talking to themselves, okay? You notice that when the character is speaking, what they say is in quotation marks. Make sure that you are using quotation marks when your character is having a conversation, a dialogue between two or more characters. The character thinking, next example, what am I doing on the side of this cliff? How did I ever let my brother convince me to go cliff jumping, to give cliff jumping a try? There's not a bone in my body that wants to jump into that icy water. So your character is thinking to him or herself, okay? And then your character action, your character is doing something. Everyone was shouting up to me and encouraging me to jump, but I knew that I had made a mistake. Slowly, carefully, I began to inch myself away from the cliff's edge. So you've got your character speaking, thinking, and doing. All right? Before you write, let me show you my example. We'll go through uh, the one that I have. Remember, we're talking about my memoir as an example. My memoir is about when I met my best friend and how we found out our families knew each other previously, before we knew each other. All right, so here are my examples. Speaking, guess I can't slow poke around today. Got to be on time for my first day, I said to my mom. So that's me, because it's first person, right? How, what point of view is the memoir told in? First person. First person, all right. So I am the character speaking. In my thinking example, as my mom pulled up to the daycare, I thought to myself, how bad could this be? They're just little kids. You realize the character's thinking? Okay. And then the doing example. The character has to be doing something. Whether it's you or another character in your story. I gripped the steering wheel tighter and I braced for the next scream to come out of the little four-year-old's mouth and pierce my ears. So the character did something. The character's bracing, holding on to the steering wheel. Remember, you already know I'm driving a nursery school van. The little four-year-old's in the back of the van screaming and pitch, pitching a fit, throwing a tantrum. So here's your speaking, thinking, doing. You got it? All right. So I'm going to set a timer for you. 
I want you to try your hand at each one of these character leads. You already have a scene. You already have an example of figurative language. Now you want to work on character leads. Three examples. Thinking, speaking, thinking, and doing. Do I have questions before I set the timer? All right. I'm going to give you six minutes. Two minutes per. Okay? Six minutes. So you're just thinking out loud. So this is going to be the second example of your character, the second character thinking. So write that sentence here. Right? And then I still want you, although you're using this, I still want you to try to come up with these two examples because you may want to change it. Is there anybody else who is using a pre-written memoir? Anybody that's had their own that they were using? No one? sake of time, if you flew through the character leads off the examples, go ahead and look at the bold statement. That's the next example we're going to practice. So look at the bold statement. Go ahead and move on to the bold statement. Check our time. You have about two minutes. If you don't need the two minutes, we'll move on. So I'll come around and check in just a second. Chantel, since we started with the examples from your story, we might as well continue with yours. Okay. 
remember, if you have finished the character leads, the thinking, speaking, and doing, go ahead and move to the bold statement. All right? Go ahead and move to the bold statement. I trust that you can read those directions and try to write the bold statement. has finished at least their character leads. You may not have done you may not have done the bold statement, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop the time and listen to one or two. No, we're gonna start oh, we only have 30 seconds anyway, so that's good. Okay. All right Chantel, go ahead and give us your character speaking, thinking and doing. to volunteer to read their character speaking, thinking, and doing. Now yesterday y'all didn't want to volunteer to do anything. No one? I have no brave souls. Okay, that's fine. We're going to go ahead and move on to the bold statement. You should have tried to do it anyway, but I'm going to show you my example. Let's look at my example of the bold statement. On your packet it says, some stories start with an announcement. The statement should be bold and even alarming. So your statement, if it's bold and alarming, it's shocking. It's almost like a hook. It makes the reader want to read your story. Remember, we're trying to figure out ways to start your memoir. Because some of us said we don't know how to start, okay? Shock your reader. Draw them into your essay. Make them want to read it, right? So remember we're talking about my memoir of meeting my best friend and finding out that our families already knew each other and that long history. So my bold statement, which you may not see is that bold. As I walked away to get into my mom's car, I thought to myself, this world just can't get any smaller. So I could start that sentence. I could, start, I could use that sentence to start my memoir and then flash back to the things that happened and then bring us currently, okay? All right, let it go with Chantel. Did you write a bold statement yet? No? Does anybody already have a bold statement written? G, you have one. Can you read your bold statement? Please. Thank you. So while he is reading his bold statement, if you haven't written one, go ahead and try your hand at that, okay? You can read it. Yeah. This is why you should never be around any cats. Okay, I read your memoir, so I understand that. Um, go ahead and read your bold statement, because I just read it. Now. I know you've done it already. From that day on, I never thought to climb a gate again. Very good. Anybody want to volunteer to read their bold statement? All right, you should volunteer to read because I know you've done it. Why don't you read yours? Your bold statement. After the ride had concluded, I promised myself I'd never let the fear of riding roller coasters stop me from having fun. That's good. Yes, ma'am. Read a little bit. I can't hear you. No, you read it. 
Listen, y'all, I don't want you to be afraid to read what you have. It is not super, super personal. Don't be afraid to read it and make a mistake with it. That's why I'm here. If you don't read it and make a mistake, then I don't have anything to do. I can't help you, all right? It's all right. Go ahead and read it. Go ahead and read it. Okay, ever since that day, I knew from that point on, I wouldn't want to play any other sport. There's nothing wrong with that. If you look at the example in your packet, most of you are writing something similar to the example. That's why you have an example. It helps you generate ideas to give you a guide, okay? All right, I am going to move on. I don't want to run out of time. Now, here's the thing. Monday, 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 your draft of your memoir is due. Okay, a draft of the memoir is due. Friday, yes, Friday, your revised final copy is due. So what I want you to do now in your Chromebooks is go ahead and go to Google Classroom. I'm going to go ahead and do it up here also. I want to show you where I want you to put your memoir. So go to Google Classroom, and when you get there, well, this is seventh grade, right? Oh, did y'all hear that question? Words? I didn't give that. So listen, let me answer her question while you're getting there. So Abby asked, how many paragraphs or how many words should your memoir be? When you were in fifth and sixth and seventh grade, we told you five paragraphs, 500 words, something like that, right? We told you that because we need to have a good sample of writing. You're in 10th grade now. We don't want to limit you with the number of words you use or the number of paragraphs you use to tell your story. If I say, give me five paragraphs, maybe you need more than that to tell your story. If I say, give me five paragraphs, maybe it's too many paragraphs for you to tell your story. You would be adding things in that you don't even need in the story just for sake of writing, okay? Write until you have completed the task. Does that make sense? All right? Does everybody understand? Oh my gosh, y'all just won't talk to me. All right. My point is, I didn't tell you how many paragraphs or how many words to write in this memoir, okay? All right, so let's look up here, or on your computer there. So you are looking at the draft of a memoir. Does everybody see that? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, so the draft of the memoir. The instructions here tell you, you should be typing your draft on this document Give your memoir a title. So when I open the document, you all have a copy of the same document. This is called MLA formatting. Heard it before? Some have, some haven't. MLA formatting means that all of your language arts papers, your research papers, your essays, whatever you turn it in, it's going to be headed the same way. Last name, comma, first name. You're not used to doing that, but you're going to do that for this paper going forward. All papers, last name, come first name, the period, the, not the period, the title of the class, World Literature. My name, P, what are you going to put? P what? P7, because it's seventh period. And then what's different about this date? It's, that's the, the 29 is first. The 29 is first, okay? So in MLA, you write the number, the day's number, the month, and then the year. So 29 August 2022, because that's what it is for Monday. But that's the date in that order. Then here it says, type the title of your memoir. Are you going to leave these words on the page? What are you going to put there instead? The title of your memoir, whatever it is. You can use what you created in a six-word memoir. You can use something spicy and jazzed up. You can use one of your leads. Maybe some of the words in, your, in one of your leads as your title. Whatever you want is fine. If you're going to delete what I have, young people, do not keep this up here. Type your title. Then come to the next line and begin typing your memoir there. So what I've done here is formatted your page for you, okay? It's formatted. It's already double-spaced. You know that informal writing is going to be 12-point font. That's the size of the letters. And then the style is Times New Roman. I know you want to put a real pretty fancy cursive title. Uh -uh. Very plain, yeah, don't do it. Very plain, very simple, orderly, all right? 12-point font, Times New Roman, it's already double-spaced. MLA, Modern Language Association, heading on the left-hand side. Your title is centered, and then you'll start typing. Got it? 
So this is what I want you to do this weekend. For the time that we have now, you'll get started. But this weekend, this is a document you will be typing on. And I want you to start a new document. I want you to type it 